Hi. <laughs> Yesterday we went to a funeral of an older woman. She was in her seven, her early 70s. And she was one of the most godly, amazing women I ever knew. She had four children and three of her children got up and spoke during the service. And the oldest daughter remarked that she was always there for them. She was always available. She would be with them when they woke up fixing them breakfast and eating with them. They'd come home, come home from school at lunch and eat with them. When they were sick, they were available. And that's how my mom was. She was always available for us. And you, you women cannot imagine the security that provides for a child unless you've had that. I knew that if I was sick at school, my mom would come get me immediately. If I was sick when I woke up, I could stay with her, hang out with her all day. Even in high school, I'd come home, open the door, yell, Mom, and want to tell her all about my day. I loved having a mom that was completely available. When children were, classmates were cruel to me, I could come home and talk to her about it. She would comfort me, encourage me with, you know, good words. And I was the, the same way for my children. I loved being home, especially because I was so sick. <laughs> I was always home. You know, I'd... It forced me to be home and not be running here and there and getting involved in this and that, which I think is a good thing. God uses all things for good. I need to make a video about being a sick mother, an ill mother, because I was one for 30 years for all of my childhood. In fact, I picked up my best friend from the airport about mm, three years ago, and my older one of my daughters was sitting in the back. She goes, you have your mom back. She's back. Her personality's back. <laughs> for Almost 30 years, I kind of lost my personality because when you're sick, you, you're just kind of trying to get through each moment. And I wasn't fun and cheerful like I was in my high school years and college years and um, tw through my 20s. Once I hit 30 though and I was so sick, it was hard for me to be myself. But I, you know, the Lord, I look back on those years and I can see that the Lord definitely was there my children say that it was a huge testimony to them because they saw me suffer. I didn't complain and I never blamed the Lord and I clung to my faith through it all. God used it for amazing good in my life. But I was always available to my children. They would come home and I, when, in the morning when they wake, woke up and have breakfast, I'd read them the Bible. I would work with them on their Bible verses. If they needed help in anything or counsel, I was there. It's just... A huge security for children to be available and what working mothers can't give that they're not always available they can't be always available they have to work to the dictates of their boss or whoever they work for their job or their clients or whatever there's a good reason God commands that women be keepers at home for many reasons in this day and age women need to be home to protect their children it's a wicked evil world he didn't intend for us to send them to the a humanist tip government-run school for their whole childhood. It wasn't his plan. His plan is for ch parents to raise their children in the nurture and admission, admonition of the Lord. Yeah, I sent my children to public school for their elementary school. But after that, you know, fifth, sixth, we figured out that that wasn't a good plan. So I homeschooled them between three to five years upon which child. And those years were wonderful. They, it was, I'd had them read for two hours a day, great literature, and then one hour of math. And I figured if they were really good readers and really good at math, anything would be possible for them. And it turned out to be true. I think even you know teaching at home, we can get too bound down with curriculum and hours, how many hours they need to be studying. But just being the ones who are raising our children in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord, they need to be have their lives filled with Jesus. Everything, most everything, everything that they do needs to be to the glory of God. And they need to be taught that. And that takes all day long, you know, while you're with them in their childhood, raising them in the nurture and, and, the, and the admonition of the Lord. That command was given to us, to no one else. We're the ones responsible for raising godly offspring. Most children being raised in Christian homes who go through the government run, run godless schools come out atheists or t have turned away from their faith. Our children's eternal souls are the most important thing, women. Do everything you can to come home 
to be available to your children and raise them in the nurture and in the admonition of the Lord. <laughs> Bye-bye.